Hello, lovelies. Thank you for joining me. This is Stamp and Love with Laura Plattner. I'm back on the all for baby stamps because when I buy a stamp and die kit, I like to make at least 10 cards out of it. Um, I tend to use them and then I like to have a couple just ready to go. And also I think it's more economic that way because then I've made 10 cards and they're less than $5 each, which is about what I would pay for a card in the store. And then I also have ideas in case I need more. So once I start making some, I just get more ideas. So these are the second set of ideas I had. Um, I started with this one and kind of chose, I wanted something a little more modern and different. And I chose these colors and I'm, I'm not sure they're my favorite colors. Looks like I need to move that light. Um, they're cute. It's a cute card. I'm not against it. Oh yeah, that looks better. Um, but uh, it's still cute. I would send this card. Um, but then I changed colors. So I went to uh, a girl card because uh, one of my friends is having a baby girl. So she knows the gender. So I used the cutouts and uh, the stamp for the little girl onesie with the frillies on it. And then I just added the bow. They also have a bow stamp. All of these stamps come with it. And again, congratulations on your growing family. Uh, so we're gonna make one of these. And also we're gonna make one of these, which is a little more gender neutral. Um, and um, you know, it's kind of has the pink, the blue, and the yellow, and these little tiny hangers are the cutest things ever. Um, and um, I like this card as well. This card's gender neutral, and you can use any crazy colors you want. Um, it's kind of fun to try different ones. So I thought I would uh, go a little more traditional with these two um, and let you know the colors. So this one is just Jade. This is the new polished pink, which is a really pretty pink. And this is Bumblebee. Bumblebee is again here with Seaside Foam and Rococo Rose, which comes a little, almost a reddish pink. Um, but it kind of worked uh, for, for this. I, I like it actually better than the polished pink, although I think any pink would do. So to make this easy, I started with the pre-made cards. Um, you can, of course, take white paper. Um, and I just uh, had this set already at home. And so they're already the A7 size, which is a five by seven uh, size card. And then I learned a couple things. Um, I measured it out the first time and then I just did it, uh, you know, guessing the second time. And as you can tell, this card is a little shorter and that's because it was uh, skewed this way. So I just cut off some of it. Um, so I'm actually gonna measure a little bit this time. And I had a ruler here somewhere. And of course, it has disappeared. How did, oh, it was in my lap, as we just heard. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna mark a little less than a half an inch. That'll be my start here. And then a little less than half an inch here. Um, that's where I want that. And then these little rollers are what I'm gonna use. I thought I got them from Stamping Up, but I looked in the catalog and they're not there. So apparently I was hallucinating. They are less than two inches. And um, so I kind of had to, uh, you know, guesstimate uh, where I got them, but I think that's going to be Home Depot because I am a Home Depot fan. And I'm marking kind of that half inch, less than two inches, so it's not quite right. I gotta go over a little bit more here. Still guesstimating, aren't I? Okay, well, again, it's a little hard to do this perfectly, let me tell you. So we'll start with the top one, which is the little girl one, it's adorable. And I'm gonna get out the Just Jade. Actually, I think this time I'm gonna switch it up and uh, do the middle one first. And um, I think I'll also do Highland Heather. See if I like that color. Um, so I just kind of took these, it looks like it's not taking very much ink, but surprise, surprise it is. This was uh, more fun and easier than I thought. So you just kind of go up. I've chosen that mark. I want it darker down here. 
And then I'm gonna go lighter up here and just roll it on off. Don't wanna get into the pre-made card already. And I think I'll grab a little more ink here. There we go. I like that transitioning of the colors there. Um, so that color I can't really use with another one right now. Um, although we are going to use Rococo Rose on this one. So I'm going to save this. And then switch to a new one. Again, I'm pretty sure it's Home Depot now because I probably just found it in the garage and thought one day, oh, that would be great for this. So... <laughs> So let's go with actually the Highland Heather. And I think I'll put it on this side. I do press a little bit to get this on, but not too much. Okay, I'm kind of eyeballing it down here. This is really just an eyeball thing. This will not be perfect. nor are they meant to be. Okay, um, another thing I wanted to show, particularly to Karen, is um, my friend Sandy and I didn't realize there are labels on the back of here. We kept thinking, how can we label this? And then finally I saw someone had labels and I realized what these were on the back. So they just peel off. I use the English, but then I put the other colors all the way around it just so I could see what color it is, no matter what direction it is, because my craft room is my dining room, and where I, oh, you probably couldn't see any of that, and where I store stuff is in the mudroom. Labels on the back, you can put them here. Uh, there is an English version. Um, it also comes in, I think that's Japanese, French and German, so you're covered on that. Okay, so the yellow one, I gotta change out the little purple. Yeah, my hands are gonna get very ink stained here, but luckily it comes off easily. Okay, bumblebee. Okay, I'm probably wiggling the table. I apologize for that. I am just doing this YouTube with my iPhone and hopefully I'll get a webcam because now I realize iPhones don't work well with this because you spend all your time rendering we're changing it to the appropriate format. Okay, so those are done, I'll let them dry, and then these little marks with the pencil come off very easily with an eraser. I'm gonna do this card now because it has one of the same color, the bumblebee. And I'm gonna do some of that marking again because or actually I could maybe just copy from here. Oh, I am kinda lazy, I don't like marking, which probably is not a good idea when you're doing detailed stuff, and maybe why I don't quilt as much anymore. It's a little harder to quilt well when you're just guesstimating. <laughs> okay. Go make that be dark all the way up. Change it up, ooh, I am a wild thing. Okay, Bumblebee's done. And we're gonna go to the uh, Seaside spray for the little blue. And um, actually, I think I'll do the Rococo Rose first. Because I don't have to change out my rolling pads. I'm gonna use the pink one. I know it's been tainted with polished pink, but that's okay. Sorry for the wiggling. Okay, that turned out just fine. And then I'm gonna take that off, easy, and put this Highland Heather back on. And I think I'll see if I can just get some of that color off. Hmm, not sure that's gonna work well. So I'll get a new one. This comes in a package of four little sponges Wherever it is it comes from. Wherever it is. Ooh, there's water on that one. I washed them last night. 
They rinse out so easily, I might add. At first I thought, well, that might be a one-time use, but nope, they're easy. This color's so pale, it looks like you're getting nothing. But I usually am, and I think I did the same thing. I think this is gonna be listing. That's what I get for not measuring. You'd think I'd learn. Nope, didn't learn. Did the same thing. Cause I don't want to ever pause the video because I have learned that it's really hard when you're doing your iPhone and you pause and have to put them together. Don't want that torture anymore. Nope, nope, nope. So again, I'm going to be lazy and I'm going to cut, cut that off to make it, to make it even. Yep. This is the way the pros do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here we go. All right. So I got those. We need to add now cute little things with it. Um, and, uh, this one, I've already stamped and cut these because, um, I think most of you know how to do that. Although I did find my friend Karen didn't know that, but we already showed her that. And she's so cute. She thinks she won't buy the, um, machine that does the cut and emboss. And little does she know, we're all suckers. We all buy it. Okay. Got to find my right little things here. So these three. Um, so I've stamped these. You can also stamp the little pockets on them, which is about the cutest thing in the universe. They look like sunglasses. And in fact, if you do stamp too hard, that little centerpiece will come over or show up, which I did. And then I thought that was kind of cute. I could put it there on the baby's little outfit, like they have sunglasses hanging from their onesie. I mean, is that a cool baby? Maybe a Hollywood baby. If I knew any Hollywood babies. Maybe for Aaron and Ben, I could do a Hollywood baby one. They're partial Hollywood. They'd probably be bored with that idea. Okay. So these um, I put kind of staggered. I thought it looked cute that way. You could do it straight. You could also do this where you add um, that across. But I kind of like the idea of doing something a little different for each card. Um, I did add just random pieces. Um, of this uh, color um, and I did it before after I stamped it so it kind of limited me where I could stamp um, so I'll probably do something like that maybe a little less of the yellow um, then it'll be tricky to stamp there and um, it's a pretty good size stamp. It would probably fit on that yellow one if I made this yellow. Nope, it looks like it would fit. So let's try stamping the yellow one. Let's cut it about here. Do a practice stamp. See if it works. <laughs> okay, I have a little tiny black ink spot. Let me ink it up without wiggling the table here. This ink spot is not the best one. But I don't always like using the memento one uh, because when I use my chamois, that memento never comes off. So let's see if you can see this. Oh, I think it's off, it is off. Mm, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a no. Um. Okay, plan B, before we go and cut anything else, again. Oh, here we go. Hello, little one. That's small enough, it'll fit. Because as you know, I'm not stopping the video. I don't care if we have an earthquake here in Arizona, which is extremely unlikely, so I can say that. Other side. Hello, little one. You're gonna be crooked, aren't you? Oh no, that's cute. Okay, so that'll that'll work. We'll just cut these guys up and make them a little shorter randomly. I think that's kind of my motto here, isn't it? And it really means because I'm too lazy to measure. <laughs> okay. And then the 
really cute hangers are part of this die set. I <laughs> have two of them, so you can cut two at once. They are adorable. I have pre-cut the hangers. Um, so we have three little hangers. And um, I glued them on last time, but I think uh, the way the uh, little dimensionals fit, I don't actually have to glue them. I can just put them on with dimensionals. So let's do that. I need to wipe off my stamps before they're forever black. And this is the chamois I talked about. You can see the little dwarves that are forever etched in memento ink. <laughs> Although they are cute. Okay, the glue is a big arm's reach. I'm gonna grab for it. But I did say I wanted the um, dimensional. <laughs> and I didn't get those, I got glue. Does that count? No, it doesn't. Doesn't count at all. I cleaned up my table because my friend's coming over. I should have never done it. Okay, so here we are with these little sticky hexagons, which are so fun to put on. Yeah, that just works fine to keep the hanger on there. And this is where, if I can, oh yeah, sometimes I stamp on the back, and if it doesn't look good, then I'll just turn around and stamp on the front. I never knew how hard stamping was. You think it's easy, but then you stamp something and half the color doesn't stay down. You feel, you feel like a stamp failure. <laughs> As Lily, who is soon to be five, said when she had a stamp failure, she says, I learned from Brainchild that when you get frustrated because you're doing something that didn't turn out well, to go do something that you're good at. So she said when she didn't stamp something right that she was gonna go color because she knew she was good at coloring. <laughs> I love that. I think that's good advice actually. <laughs> and you can tell I got a little black stamp down here. Well, that's not gonna come off, so that'll be part of the card. Wish I could have drawings to give these cards away. But since they're not live, I guess that's not really possible but it would be fun. If I knew how, I would do it. I'm just learning. Today I'm actually gonna buy a webcam because I think that'll be fun. So I plan on going to Best Buy after this. And then I'm gonna lift these. How about stamp and peel at the same time or put them on and peel. Ooh, I feel very slick. Small enough, barely small enough. I have to actually carefully put them on. Barely small enough. So these little pieces are from the Subtles collection with Stamping Up. And um, the pink and the blue one are a little less than an in, half an inch. They're actually four tenths of an inch. And this one is a little over half an inch and it's somewhere between six and seven tenths of an inch. Okay, so then we'll stamp in the middle that says congratulations or on the inside. And um, that card's done. Just a little discoloration there. I guess that means it's handmade. Let's go on to the little girl one, which is really cute. Same general thing. Um, gotta erase these little spots. I guess they don't erase as easily when they're inside. Because the other time I measured more precisely and they were on the outside. 
Okay, this one needs um, the clothesline. And so that is what the stamp set. I made mine black. And then I made the actual clothespins be cinnamon cider. Oh yes, this is riveting YouTube moment as I stamp this. So since I've already done one, it's easy to kind of guess where it goes because I saw it looked good on the other one. Okay. I will wipe that off. My chamois. And I do love the little hands, little feet, big gloves. So I'm going to stamp that again. I'm gonna to need to get a bigger black pad. Okay. So we've got that stamped. Three girl ones. Okay, the other thing I'm going to need are the clothespin. And they actually have clothespin cutouts you can do. Again, super cute. Or you can stamp them. And I thought it was cute stamped. Uh, I really thought it was kind of perfect that way. Um, if I did another card, of these, which I, I will, I'll do some other designs. And um, I'd probably cut out those little clothespin because they're cute. But we're gonna use cinnamon cider. And this one you do wanna stamp off. It'll be noisy while you're doing it. So I'm gonna stamp it off once, and then stamp it here. Ooh mistake. All right, that's looking bad. Mm. Well, it seems like I'm always just showing my fails here. <laughs> and then I forgot to stamp off. This is bad. This is really bad. All right, so we're going to give this card to someone I don't like. fix that. It is what it is. <laughs> then these would be put on with dimensionals. There is also a really cute bow you can stamp on the little onesies. So I'm going to do that. Although apparently I'm sending this to somebody I don't like. I'll, I can't blame the baby. So I'll, have, I'll put a bow for the baby. Just for the baby though. need an assistant who like stands behind you and opens everything. Okay, so that's the little bow. We'll stamp it right there. That's perfect. And with dimensionals, I guess I could like cover it up, make it be higher. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Well, that's it for today. Thank you, lovelies, for watching me. Hopefully one day, one of these videos won't be a fail and will be polished and perfect. <laughs> Have a great day. Bye. Okay, lovelies, after taking a few minutes of coloring, I'm back. I'm ready to try this again. So I re-stamped it, actually on the other side. And um, I'm going to try this again. If first you don't succeed, try, try again. All right, that one's not bad. Stamp. I guess I just get carried away. I'm like 
video. I want to prove how strong I can stamp. Me stamp strong. There it is. They got stamped. Woo! Let me just put these on. Or they look like they're hanging. Oh, they're so itty bitty and so cute. I even had to use the teeny tiny dimensionals for the straps. Okay, well, there's a card. Oh, good Lord, look at me. Just got ink there. Oh, I guess I should have colored some more. So what I did with this one is I just redid it again. And what I'll do is I'll cut this off, make it a little smaller, and put it on a different color card, either pink, yellow, or the lavender. So before I get any more ink everywhere, I'm just gonna call it quits. Oh, there's the culprit right there. <laughs> Thank you for joining me today, lovelies. Bye. Hi, lovelies, I'm back because I couldn't stand all the smudges, so I had to tear apart that card and remake a new one. So I did, and this time, instead of stamping on these little things, which I have failed twice on camera, I decided to use this cute die cut. Uh, because it's cute and because I am a perfectionist and I couldn't stand that these didn't work. And I even had a piece of paper that is wood colored. So it was meant to be. So I will show you what I did with the other little piece in a moment, but I cut these out. They're super cute and I can barely feel them because I have numb fingers. Thank you, chemo. But this way it looks promising that I won't get ink where it doesn't belong. I don't know, it seems to be the theme, so it's very possible I will. But these are, these are coming along. Okay, one more. A couple of the teeny tiny glue dots. These come with the paper pumpkin kit. I give you plenty of them, I've never had to order these. So this is what it's like to live with a life as a semi-perfectionist. Other things like cleaning my house, I don't really care about. Ooh, those are even cuter actually. So I think, I think that's a pretty good win. Oh, that's pretty cute too. But that's adorable. Now I have to put on the dimensionals. Where, oh, where could it be right here? I'll try not to put on too many just because it's kind of boring to watch people put on dimensionals and take them off, especially without the little picker tool, which I have somewhere amongst, as previously discussed, the mess. So after I got ink everywhere, it was on my hands and I spent a long time coloring. I thought, I'm just gonna try it again because I really do wanna give this card out. I really do have people I need to send them to. And um, I came up with a great idea to reuse the other one that had the ink on it. So it's amazing. Lily's advice worked. Okay, and then I got a great idea for stamping on the inside. So I had already stamped that, congratulations. And then I just took this roller brush and bubble bee went over it. And of course I made ink there, so I'll have to stamp a teddy bear there in the corner, which will be really cute anyway, and I think I would have done that. I won't do that here on the video because I'm sure to get this cursed cinnamon cider color everywhere. But I am gonna stamp the teddy bear there. So that 
turned out cute after all. And I will again stamp on the inside just like I did um, with the other ones. This is the one we made together. And um, again, I went ahead and put that so I can just stamp right on top of it with the congratulations. And that um, card I just completed. Oops, sorry. Well, I guess it is complete. I don't need to stamp that. I guess I could break. No, no, no. This goes on something else. Never mind. It's hard when you have all these little visions of cards floating in your head. Okay, so the cut up piece is over here. So I cut out the bottom that had the problem on it. And then I kind of trimmed it up a little bit. Uh, tried to make it so it would look nice on a five by seven card. And then I started looking for colors and this was tricky. This was tricky. Um, we have the very, very, very hot pink, which I have to admit I kind of like, but I thought it was a little too bright. And then we have cute little polka dots on a turquoise, but it didn't pull any colors from here. A little bit of seafoam green. Well, that's not gonna cut it. Pale pink, not bad, not bad. Um, I thought I might uh, be stuck with pale pink. Mm, darker pink's even better. And then that seafoam green, I really didn't want to get stuck with that. So I found a lavender and I actually really like this lavender. I think it works and that is what I'm going to use. Um, and then, because the shape isn't quite perfect, I cut out a piece of white paper to go underneath it and frame it. So that's gonna be cute. Have no problems with any of those. I'm even willing to commit to taping them down. So I'm gonna take this one on here. And we'll take this one to the card. All right. Yes, that's ink in my finger. We meant to actually, and it doesn't come out easily. This is kind of little cuts, up, cut up bits of the other part. Then I want to put congratulations here, but I'm afraid of stamping that. So I'm going to actually cut this with my little, that's why I have my tape here, with my little cut and emboss machine. And it's right beside me. I don't think I really need to bring it in the screen, but there it is if you want the excitement. Wow, does my table wiggle. Okay, that'll work. Back we go. And then this I'm gonna put here and not worry about getting ink everywhere. You can see I used, I tried several times to fix that card. <laughs> but I didn't give up, I'm not a quitter. This is like Rocky three. Dun, 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 dun. I'm back. All right, and then inside I will put some white paper and stamp that with sentiments. So it ended up being a cute little card that I saved out of it, um, and yet it's perfect. Thanks, lovely. Bye.